Crispin, The Cross of Lead, Chapter 40. Please like, share, and subscribe. Hearing my name called so terrified me, I stopped and turned around. The man had drawn closer, but as I could not see his face, I shrank away. Only when the voice called out again, even angrier, Crispin, you stunted son of a scoundrel, did I realize it was Bear. Heart exploding with relief, I ran toward him and flung myself at his knees, embracing him with fervor. Where by the sins of Lucifer have you been? The huge man said, setting his lantern on the ground. Prying me loose, then putting his great hands on my shoulders, he made me stand before him. At the same time, he went to his knees so he could look into my eyes. Bear, I said, unable to say more because I had put my arms around him and pressed into his neck and beard like an infant sparrow returned to its nest. Crispin, he scolded, I waited all afternoon for you to return. Did you forget me so soon? Is this the way you repay my kindness? I should give you a sound whipping. I didn't mean to. I lost my way, and I was attacked. Attacked, he said, prying me loose from his neck so he could look into my face. By whom? The Stuart's men. What Stuart? From Stromford, John Acliffe. He's come after me, I went on in a rush. I saw him in the great church, but he saw me too. The moment he did, he set men upon me. And Bear, I remember something else. He's Lady Furnival's kin. I even saw her. You said Great Wexley was Furnival's principal home. That Stromford was one of his holdings. Now that Lord Furnival is dead, Lady Furnival must have summoned Acliffe. I feared that might happen. Why didn't you tell me? I wanted to avoid it. My wrist is numb where they struck me. Then you'll have to walk on your feet, he said, grinning. With that, he turned about and began to wend his way through the back streets and dark alleys, his lantern barely showing through the dark and rain. When I tried to defend myself, I said after we'd gone for a while, I lost your dagger. I'm sure you used it well. Bear, I said as we went along. What? God bless you. And you also, he returned gruffly. Only when I was secure behind the doors of Widow Davenry's end did I draw a fully relaxed breath. I looked about. The main room was deserted. Bear, you need to tell me what I should do if... The widow came into the room. As she did, Bear put his hand to silence me. Ah, the woman said, you found him. He was wandering and became lost, Bear said, not mentioning the attack. Did the watch see you, she asked me. I don't think so. Good, she drew herself up. I'm afraid John Ball has just arrived. Where is he, Bear said. In the kitchen. He demanded to be fed. Fine. I'll get the boy to the room. Can you fetch him something to eat and some dry clothes? I'll get some, the woman said, and left the room. Giving no explanation as to what the exchange with Widow Daventry had been about, Bear and I returned to our room. Once there, he set the lantern on the table, then bade me lie down on the pallet. When I did, Bear sat down by my side, but instead of speaking, became lost in his thoughts. Even so, I felt comforted. Widow Davendry opened the door and stuck her head inside. He's getting anxious, she said. He always was the impatient man, Bear muttered. I'm coming. The woman left. Bear stood and stepped toward the door. Now, eat your bread and go to sleep. Will you truly forgive me, I said. There's nothing to forgive. Sometimes I forget. Forget what? How little you know. With no further words, he went away. Left alone, I hardly knew what to think. But after what had just happened to me and how he had come after me, I had no heart to question him.